Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street this morning on a pretty grim day here in Birmingham but I'm hoping to bring you a little bit of sunshine and the amazing Sally Stevens is with us later with the most beautiful coloured fabric I've seen in ages. It's really pretty. So welcome. My name is John Cole Morgan. I am a quilter. I've been sewing for about six years almost and everything fabricy I am absolutely addicted to. Um, Sewing Street as you know is a brand new channel. Three weeks and four days I think. Three weeks, five days. So we're still having a few technical issues here and there. Everybody's rebuilding everything at the same time as working on it. So we are working on any issues that you have. Don't worry about it. It will get sorted. Today we are... I can't, sorry. I've got a new product today and I have cannot stop holding it and being excited about it. It's really cute. So I have got the easy ways that you can watch us, obviously channel 74 and you've got Sky on 670. Um, some of you can't get those at the moment, again we're working on those, but the amazing Neil did a tutorial last week Tuesday which was able to show you how you can get YouTube on your channel, uh, on your normal TV channels, getting a little stick. I didn't understand it beforehand and he put on Facebook saying it was really boring but I actually really found it very interesting and now I have one on my television. So I think that's a really good watch. If you aren't able to get it on your normal ways of finding it, go and watch that little video and you'll be able to see. You'll be able to follow us on YouTube as well. The channel is called Sewing Street on YouTube and there's a little subscribe button so if you click that you'll be able to get our videos at any time that you want to see it. Um, and as many of you have been on our website before, all you're going to be able to do is you just type in sewingstreet.com on the top and you'll be able to have the what's live at the moment on the air and below that you've got all of our wonderful products and it's just a wonderful scrolling thing of loveliness. And also then what you'll find as well, each time we put a graphic up, you will get a code at the very top of the screen and if you look at your page over here on the actual website, I've put the iPad flat now so you can see on the overhead as I type, um, you'll be able to see there's a little search bar in the very top. Um, you'll be able to see there's a little search album, at the, a search thing at the top there. And if you've got that search thing and, and you can't find something you're looking for on the website, all you're going to do is the little product code that are in your graphics, you will be able to type up in there and then your product you're looking for will come up and then all you do is you tap on it and the product you're looking for will pop up. Oh, oh, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm not supposed to show you that. Not allowed to show you that yet. Sorry. So that's how you can find it. So if you are having any issues with the website, please, you know we're three weeks old. It's still coming. It's getting there. Everybody's working hard on it. So do that. I also have to thank you all for your amazing feedback online. Um, we're currently monitoring every single Facebook page we have. Ideally, Facebook at uh, the Sewing Street TV page is the one that we monitor whilst we're on air. The slide's up now with the, the link to it. We're monitoring that while we're on air. Obviously the other one as well, but this one more closely. So if you have any questions for me or for Sally or just to give us a general shout out, pop us a question on there and we can then respond to you on there immediately. But keep your comments coming, keep your feedback coming. I know many of you wanted overlocking machines and you wanted dressmaking and my last two shows were those two things. I was just lucky enough to be able to bring those and you want patterns on their own rather than with kits. So that's really great as well. So we need your feedback to know what it is that you want. And when you pop them on there, then if we can, we bring them to you. And if we haven't brought them to you yet, we're still hunting for them. So just keep that feedback coming. It's really, really helpful for us. We've got some amazing things on the show today. Um, we've got some beautiful fabric and you know what I'm like with a good fabric. Look at that! This is just so, so lovely. And these come as a little bundle, which are just, look at the little birdies! You know I love a birdie, look how cute they are. You see, every time I do f uh, look at these fabrics, I always think, is, oh, can I fussy cut those out? Can I make those into something? Can I do something else with it? And these are really cute as well. Just look at these beautiful f bright petals and the, f and the swirls there. Do you call that a fleur de lis? I'm not quite sure. Like a little teardrop or a raindrop, like a little paisley. But it's just so intricate with the beautiful designs on it. So these are a lovely pattern. And so, shall I open these up? I'm going to open them up. This is actually, what I love about this is it comes as a bundle, but this is a double panel in two colorways. These are, this is just, is this half a meter? 
I think this is half a metre. I'm going to measure it now once I've finished showing you. Just look how cute they are. And what I love is those bright pink birds on both sides of them pop on each level. Oh, it's, so this is 60 centimetres. I'm just going to measure it here. Uh, so it's 24 inches here, 60 centimetres width of fabric. So that's the one, that's just the panel. So that's that bit there. And then obviously you're getting your half metre of this as well. Um, so this is as a bundle today, which I love. Look at that. What? Sorry, I've just looked at the graphic. I didn't know how much these were. Seventeen ninety-seven for the two pound for the two. That's really good. Are you sure? That I'm, every time I come on here, I keep saying, "Are you sure that's right?" Because that is such a good price. Because you know, a meter of this fabric, you're looking at thirteen, fourteen pounds a meter. So you're getting half a meter of this one, and then you're getting half a meter of the cute little birdies. So you're almost getting the panel for free, almost. Oh, they look so cute like that. Oh, and, when, and you see what I love about these fabrics is when you zoom in, some of the fabrics that you buy, you know they've got little blurry edges and you're not quite sure, is it a, is it a line, is it a bird? But these are just so clear and beautiful. And then for that price, you're getting a metre of fabric. So you're getting that half metre. You're getting this gorgeous blue half metre as well with the little paisleys on it. And you're getting these two panels. Can't go wrong with that for $17.97. And I, but you can see just how beautifully they go together. And we're very lucky because Sally's going to show us some amazing project to be able to do with this. Are we going to do these again? Can we show these again? Oh, right. Sorry, because the, these are also being sold on their own. So if you wanted to buy the bundle, which is really great value, you'll be able to get an extra panel as well. Oh my gosh, the panel's only eight pounds, seven ninety nine. Because what's really great with these as well, and I'm sure Sally's going to do this later, but if you wanted a nice sized quilt, you could just keep buying panels. And at that price, that's cheaper than normal fabric. So you can get these and do these. Well, I'm paying, yeah, I think for, for a half meter, we all know we're paying about that price anyway, but this is so much more interesting. Look at that. Oh, I'm very excited to see with this. Really, really excited. And then obviously the half meters that I've got here is the coordinates. These are being sold on there as well. So we're going to do the blue one here. Oh, that is beautiful. And what I love is it goes so perfectly with this. It goes so beautifully with that panel. You know what I love is they're so clever, these designers, and they go with these beautiful pop colors of pink that just tie in everything. And it just looks so, so, so fresh. And with Oh, that actually, you can see now, oh, if I could hold this a little better, you'll be able to see all three of them in a row. Watch them all fall down. Let's see if I get this angle just right. Nope. <laughs> I tried, I tried. And these are $5.99 for a half metre. They are really good value for that. £12 a metre for fabric, that is really good. Especially when it looks so lovely and it feels so good. Oh, goody. I'm sorry. I'm very excited because now I've hidden my favorite product. So I'm going to open these while I'm going to do a little reveal. Last week I had these on, but in a different color. And I'd not seen them in this color. And I am loving this colorway more than the other one. Sorry, but I do. And I've got the other colorway, so I'm going to have to get it past management to get these. But look at these beautiful scissors. And this again is a set, so not only are you getting this beautiful pair of shears, because as you know, what would you be paying for a pair of scissors like this on their own? And you're looking about 15, 20 pounds on those, but you get these beautiful little scissors as well. And these little embroidery scissors are so adorable. You've got the stalk detailing on it as well. It's very cute. And we all know we need a good pair of small scissors that you can take with you. And as far as I know, if I'm not mistaken, the height of the scissors from the join to the end is less than what most airlines require for you to take on a plane. And they're not, they're quite safe to take, as I've taken these on a plane before, but check the website for each airline because they all change differently. Because the measurements from the join, from the join 
to the top. So you get those, but you also get these very cute little pins, which I love. So these pins were what we had at the, I love these because these are all silver and I know some people like rose gold and some don't, but just look how cute they are. And if that's not good enough, you get a lovely little thimble, a little top hat for your finger. They are really cute and I love these thimbles. See, I'm a traditionalist. I like a metal thimble because I bought one of those plasticky ones and I had it on my finger and I'm really lazy and I just pushed it through and the needle went straight through the plastic thing into my finger. Yes, there were a few very unpleasant words uttered that afternoon. So I love these metal ones because I know they're safe. They're traditional and they work. And what a beautiful gift. And it's Mother's Day next week. So what else is at the... Oh yes, Mother's Day next week. So you'll be able to get these. These are a gorgeous gift for mum. Because it's also, you want to make sure you're getting something for her that she's going to use. Because it's all very well buying something that she doesn't want. And they always scream at us when we buy chocolates and things. Because apparently they'd never eat chocolate. But it's really cute. So you can see this wonderful bundle together. I'm going to try and see if I can do something really... Oh, look at that, I've got all pieces there. So I'm gonna just slide those out the way so you get a bit of clearer shot. So you get the pins, you get the thimble, you get the embroidery scissors. I'm trying to move these as I go. And the beautiful shears as well. Because I love these shears. And as you all know, I've got these in the rose gold, but I have to say, I do prefer the silver. It's just a personal choice. I love the rose gold as well, but this I do think is just quite traditional. And it's a nice weight. Because you wanna make sure, you know, when you're doing the cutting with hands, you want to make sure you've got that lovely crunchy fabric cutting sound, which just makes everything worthwhile. So this, I'm, this is, I'm sold, I'm sold. And I'm having another one of these now, Shay, my poor husband. I'm glad he doesn't have to see these things. So we're going to go through now all the, what we're going to do is also if you, please, if you want to contact us during the show, Facebook, there is a, a slide going to pop up on your screen now. That is the best way of, um, that's the best way of getting hold of us while we're on the show. Um, Sewing Street TV, you'll be able to get us through on that. Send us your messages, any of your comments, any suggestions. And as you've been able to see recently, we are following them very, very closely. So please just keep them coming. Sally, it's lovely to meet you. I'm going to give you a hug. I know we're not allowed to in this environment. Oh. <laughs> but it's lovely to have you. Lovely to be I'm here. I'm so excited to see what you're doing. Yes. So tell us a bit about yourself, because some of our viewers may not have seen you before. OK, so I've been sewing for a little bit longer than six years. <laughs> I'm near 46, possibly. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh, I should have just said seven, shouldn't I? <laughs> a little over six, we'll yeah, go with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Started when I was 14, I've only been sewing for seven years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I've been sewing for, for a long time and got bitten by the bug patchwork and quilting very early on. So it's been my hobby me for too. me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So it's been my hobby for pretty much all of my life. Um, long before rotary cutters and rulers were, in, were invented, so scissors were definitely... These amazing scissors! Yeah, absolutely. But they are good, aren't they? They are, they're lovely, and as you say, they do Would you tell me if they weren't? Cut. You would, oh, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. Oh, Sorry. yes. I don't think, well, in my experience, we sell anything that isn't worth having here, so... It's all worth yeah. it. <laughs> Very good. You can come any time oh, you. you like. <laughs> you. So, yeah, I got into that as a hobby. Got into the IT industry, IT industry for work and Gosh. did a lot of writing and editing. Got into then magazine writing and editing. So I've been a magazine editor right. um, for quite a few years. I'm not doing that at the moment, but I do projects for magazines. And um, was invited onto the previous channel, which I've done nearly two years for. for. So I was delighted to be asked to come. Onto the new one. Onto the new one. How and, wonderful. Yeah, really excited. And I was on the show yesterday with some fantastic fabrics and I'm lucky enough to have more fab fabrics that I just love today. So am I. Look how pretty they are. Yeah. So, do you want to show us what you've done? Can okay. I just stop for one second? Because we have got these amazing Alpha rotary cutters here and this is not planned. Would you like to see Sally's choice of rotary cutters? And this is on hers, it's all hers anyway. So these are the exact same ones. And what a clever way of doing... Yes, I'm always teased for that. I've got my no, name on not. absolutely everything. Do you know the number of... I've lost rotary mats. I've lost everything oh, on them. That's yes. a really good way of doing it. So if you are looking for a rotary cutter, you can't go wrong with that because you can see that these are what she's using. She's literally put her name on them. I love that. I can show the new one and Sally's one. 
It's a good well, idea if you're classes. That's, that's the thing. Is it is. Very that because much Because I'm so. expecting people to walk off with them. But, you know, you do get... To, but we you, all have the same rotary yeah, patterns. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, if, if um, you are in a group of people, you're all packing up at the end in a hurry. It's nice exactly. to make sure you've got yours to take home with and you. And I'm an absolute... I'm so fastidious about safety with these rotary cutters. Yes. And I'm sure you would be as well. And that little lock on and off button... Yeah, absolutely. I think is so vital. Yeah, absolutely, because... Elf um, and safety never takes a day off, does it? <laughs> it does <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, some of the um, older and less good quality, they leave the blade out. Yes. And if you can imagine, if the blade is left out yes, and it goes, it goes under exactly. the fabric, it's so easy. So, exactly. yeah, these are excellent and I highly recommend those. They are my favourites, quite genuinely. As we're doing the bundle, I'm just looking at these. You know how you get the selvages? Look at how they've done the colouring of the selvages here. Sorry, I am absolutely adore selvages. And they've got these tiny little... What, what would you call them? I think they're more of the little birds. The little birds, but oh, they're yeah. just too cute and they've got all the different colourways on them. Yeah. Do you keep your, your do. selvages as well? What do you yeah. do with yours? Well, with if they're pretty ones, which most of them are, I use them for tying up my tomatoes in the garden. Oh, that's um, clever. Yeah, wrapping round things to hold them together, sticks and whatever. Yeah, I use I use them all. I love so, those. Yeah. Well, you've and got to love a good salvage. And if you're tying up your flowers and, and things in the garden, they're pretty all year round, even if you've got nothing They are, exactly. <laughs> so let's show us what you're going to be doing here. Shall I take these? Yeah. So everybody on the screen at the moment, you'll be going to have a bu um, the graphics. This is now for the, all the bundle. So that's going to be the 60 odd centimetre um, panel, which has got two of them. One being this one, and then one being this one. Obviously, I'm, I'm, yours won't be beautifully done like this, <laughs> but those are the two panels. And then the one metre of coordinating fabric, which is half a metre of each of them. So that's the graphic that's up there. But if you wanted to get the more panels, etc., as I said earlier, go onto the website, just have a search through there and you'll be able to find the bundles on there, the bundle as well as in individual pieces on their own. Because did, won't, don't you think that this would be really lovely as a quilt? Having a yes. few of these as a go. Yeah, and if you just put those two side by side. They gorge. And these two side by side. You've basically got a really quite good a size, size of quilt. quilt. And that will come out at about 42 inch square. Yeah. And that's so a really that's lovely a size. Decent size quilt. It is. I'll just and lay it, this flat. The idea of the theme of this show really is for beginners. So it's a ready printed panel. Yep. So it looks like beautiful patchwork. And although you said this has been beautifully done, I'm going to show you how to make one of your own. Love it! But sorry, what I've just noticed here is you've got the cutting instructions and how to sew them and what to do with them all. The uh, designer has, has designed the quilt to be double-sided. but I thought, Love a double-sided quilt. But I thought, I like all the nice on the top. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to cut them apart and use them for, for no, fronts. There's no right or wrong. It's what no, works for isn't. you. So I've just used a simple plane from my stash That's on the back. perfect. Nice coordinate. Yeah, just picked one that I So have talk us through what you're going to show us today. So what I was going to show you is if you if you look at the um, cut panel, you'll see that it, it ends with a sort of candy stripe oh, piano nice. key little border. You can leave that on or you can cut it off. It's entirely up to you. But I suppose as well, you, if you left your quarter inch seam, you'll just have a little pop of it. Oh, like that's what you've right. done. So that's what I've done here. That's very cute. So I've left that on. Oh, and you've used the coordinates. And I've used the coordinates to add an extra board, oh, which how again, cute. I'm going to show you how to do. Because if you've got a panel like this, it can just be the centre of your quilt and you can make it as large as you so like with whatever. A bit like a medallion quilt, I suppose. Absolutely. Yes, and just keep adding borders and borders Absolutely. and borders. Absolutely. So we're just going to add one border today which the fabric you've got will easily do for the two panels. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can add your own colours. If you've got some greens, pinks, blues of your own that you want to add and make it larger, you can. That's wonderful. So you've got a good start in the centre. It looks more complicated and impressive than perhaps... Um, and, and these points are a lot better than my points they, have ever been. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> but I'm also going to show you when you're quilting. I've already partly quilted it, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to show you, which is the reason for the pin in there, so I can remember. Um, how to turn corners when you're quilting and just oh, make good. sure. Very, very basic and simple for people that are beginning, but also hopefully for people that are a bit more experienced, just a reminder of some little tips and Because a lot of the people that I teach, they t they're, they're very good at their patchwork now, yep. but they're complete novices on quilting. Yeah, so, so we're going a, to talk a, a bit, bit about that. Brilliant. Yep. What a yep. nice marrying in. Yes. These so, really yeah, it works, it works really nicely. I've just noticed the detailing on the little... They've got the... Um, 
I want to say Sashiko-esque, I don't know if that's the right terminology, that you can see the little, it looks like thread markings yeah. coming all the way through that's actually been stitched on, uh, printed onto the fabric as well. That's really clever. So if you fancy trying a little bit of hand quilting, then you can actually use that <gasps> as your pattern. Guide. Yeah. guides. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. And, and, and the thing is, as I'm quilting this, it's not a big daunting that's prospect, right. which is not something yeah. you feel comfortable so with. So it's something you can get into, you can learn lots of little techniques without spending a huge amount of money. I can't believe the price of the I know. It's not just me. I no, thought that was, was printed wrong. Because I'm not told what the price I've is I've had going confirmation to be, so. they are correct, so <laughs> get it while you can. Go for it. Um, so yes, you, in, in doing this panel, whether you put the borders on or not, you can learn lots of techniques that will give you much more confidence when you go forward. Exactly. Wonderful. And this you've just done. So when you're putting these together, you'll get your normal piece of fat, your top here. Yep. Um, do you then use basting glue as well? For I some do. Yeah. I do as well. I but do. A very, do you find if you put too much, it bungs your machine up? I haven't really had that problem. But then again, I'm very mean with everything I use. So perhaps I don't. Economical. <laughs> Economical. <laughs> Um, so yes, and always, if you're using a spray based, something like 505 spray or similar, always spray the wadding, not the fabric. I didn't know that. Yeah. I've always done the fabric. No, always spray the wadding. Oh. And then lay the fabric on it and smooth That's that out. That's a much better idea. Purely because the, um, the, the, the spray glue can, it, I mean, it's not always going to do this but if you are a bit over spraying and particularly in one place you can leave a little bit of a, a water residue mark. right yeah. okay yeah that makes sense and that may wash out but of course you, you just want to be you careful want to protect, you've spent so much time doing the top you yeah. want to make sure it's right or yeah. well, in this you've spent virtually no time at all just popping a border on yeah no five minutes it was done <laughs> not quite but but I in, love literally a quick in an afternoon sew. i yeah. love a quick sew it literally was an afternoon project that's wonderful and you know that but as i always say when i'm i'm um, showing people how to quilt or teaching people it's not a race. You don't have to rush. If I did it in afternoon, it doesn't mean to say you've it gone really wrong if you to. haven't. So take your own time. Well, that's the thing as well, because I find that people do rush through these things. And that quilt you're going to look at for 20, 30 years. Hopefully, yes. So if you rush it through in the afternoon and you've made a little blupsy there, you're always going to look at that tiny little mistake and think, oh, if I'd spent 10 minutes more, just 10 minutes more. Well, true, but I would rather be finished than too fussy. Finish is better than perfect. Yes. Perfect. Because yeah, nothing can ever be perfect. No. Um, well, apart from yourself, good, good self. Oh, she can. Oh, mm. <laughs> I love you to bits. Um, right. Yeah. I feel like I'm holding you up on your display, on your demo. No, that's fine. So let's go to the cut panel and I'll just talk a bit through that. So the panels were joined together and I've just simply cut them apart. See that one okay? And I've left the stripey border on, yep. but if you wanted to cut that off, of you course can. you could. Just now, be aware that if you cut, it, if off, you cut you it off, leave a quarter Leave a quarter of an inch yes. so you're not sewing Otherwise into Otherwise you'll be cutting into the... Um, or sewing onto the fabric yeah, then, you'll be missing right. the thing. So if you're going to do that, leave your quarter inch on, to, on the... So you would be cutting round about there. So you'll be able to then make sure that when you're doing your sew line, you get right. the full thing on that. But I think if you're going to be starting with this, leave that border on and then you've got a bit of wiggle room. I agree. Okay. But I'd, li I'd like a little pop of that, but that's just me. Yeah, no, it's, it's, well, you do it's too. good. Yeah. <laughs> so then the next thing, I've already pre-cut these to save some time. I thought you can do either either fabric you can do for the, for the mm -hmm. border. You can either do the bird one or you can do the blue floral one. Let's do the bird one. Yes, because I did the blue. I was, the blue. Well, no, I was thinking more that it ties it in goes. beautifully with yes, that. Yes, because this is the same fabric. Oh, of course same, it is. Same design. Yeah, on both. On both. Oh. So it goes perfectly. And although this pattern isn't repeated on the panel, it, still goes it is the exact same colourway. Color. So, and even the green. Oh, it's beautiful. So it's so well thought out. And that's another thing, if you're a beginner and you're trying to match fabrics, that can be a bit daunting for people. So I would always say, if you've got a concerns about what colours to put together, find yourself a nice fabric or a nice panel like this and then pick the colours that are in it to because match. the designer has already done the work for, done you. The work for you and they're the experts, That's so why not take true. advantage? So for putting the borders on, you can make the borders any width that you choose, but for a smaller panel, you probably don't want a really wide no. border because it, it will dominate it distorts them. It, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so what have you chosen as your so border So I've size? chosen a two inch oh, that's border a nice size. size. You could go two and a half inch. Of course. This little corner um, 
piece, this band, if you like, is three inches wide. So I would Oh, it's try... nice to have the three inches, a little pop, and then yeah, two inches. Yeah, that's right. So, and then your yeah. binding would be another little pop. And that's about another half Perfect. inch then, yeah. So when you're doing a panel like this, you think, oh, that looks square. So I'll measure that side, and I'll cut a piece of fabric, and I'll sew that on, and I'll cut three more and do the same. Don't do that. You've all done it. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to the end, and you've got a quarter inch you've left, got a bit and you're missing. like, oh. Even a square panel... <laughs> Of you, of this kind or one you've made, anyone, they will not always be exactly no. square, and you don't want to have sewn a strip on and then find it's too short. Yes. You always cut some off. You can't add any more on. So what we're going to do, and again with a fabric like this, it is directional. So you decide whether you want your birds birdies facing in, in or in. out or a mixture. Perfect. Totally up to you. There's no right or wrong. We can have these birdies in and those birdies out. Yep. Quite, quite. And it depends. If, if it's going to be a, a wall hanging, you might want your, your birdies all, all facing the same, direction. same direction. Oh, you are clever. You've thought of everything. Because, <laughs> you know, when I do these, I'll be thinking, oh, that'd be nice as a wall hanging, and I've got one bird upside, upside down. Upside down, thinking, yeah. And I realise that once I've quilted it as well, which means you can't undo it. And the other thing about these panels, it is a mini quilt, like, like this size. Mm. Perfect for, say, a baby play mat or a child's play but mat. But also, a lady came in this week and she was looking to make a pram quilt yeah. for when the little baby's in the pram, that they're all wrapped up warm just to go over their legs. This is a perfect size yeah. for that. Yeah, so, uh, and it's a very pretty little thing for, for a child. They love bright colours. So. They do. So what we're going to do, first of all, is stitch on our first border strip. OK. And it's cut from the width of fabric, so oh, it's longer than needs to be. Always start with right sides together and if we have some pins I could use I think we have you used some. these before? yes I have yes these are these, really nice these used milled yesterday. pins are just the, are they milled or clover I can never clover. remember clover they are clover how many would you like oh well let's when we're pinning something like this I would pin one raw edge you've got a hundred you can use them all oh I <laughs> don't think we'll need a hundred <laughs> but never be afraid to use more than less if you've got more use them I'm, a, I'm not a, a big pinner, but I, I would encourage people to certainly start by pinning well. I agree. And then once you get more confident, you can... Uh, See, I don't it. like pinning at all. And I have this lovely friend that comes into my studio. And when I complain that my points haven't met, she's very subtle and she goes, should have pinned it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be showing something along those lines, yeah. So that's, uh, that's not a bad piece of advice. So the first thing I'm going to do is pin the two raw edges together and then lay it without stretching don't you don't want to stretch this yes, because otherwise it will pull in weird. so just lay it gently flat down and we pin the other end okay so you do the start and the end first yeah oh, okay i'm learning a better technique today and then in the middle just the three just the three well you can we could probably go with five well, i can do five so, and if you are looking for these pins, you'll see that the uh, the graphics have just popped in for them. They're really beautiful, fine pins, and they've got a glass head. Um, and the glass head is really great because you can then actually iron over them as well. Because the number of times you need to iron something, and you get two different colour heads. And I'm going to try and get the other one out without stabbing myself. So what I liked about these is that if I'm sewing down one end and up the other end, because I did my Bargello quilt, uh, was it last week? Must have been. Um, what I do is I do them when I'm going from top to bottom, I use my green. And when I'm going bottom to top, I'm doing my browns. So that, that way you know which direction you're going in. Yeah. I don't know whether that's what they meant it to be done, especially because I'm sure that they designed those specifically for my yeah. Bargello quilt. Yeah, they must have done. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> the other thing is being glass-headed, if you should touch them with an iron, they, they, don't, they melt. don't melt. Yeah. And I always, well, always, in this instance, I think it's a good idea to pin with the head towards, towards the centre the of the yes. quilt and the point out. Yeah. We're going to be sewing a quarter-inch seam, which is the standard yeah. for quilting. Um, I did once inquire as to why that was the case, and apparently it is just that somebody, at some point, decided, that decided was it. And, we've and I think what it. it is is that one-eighth is too small, and yeah. five-eighths is for dressmaking, and they've kind of gone sort of in the middle. Yeah, because we don't like wasting fabric. No! We're very, we want to make sure we but use all the loveliness. Is, oh, it makes all the difference. <laughs> Brilliant. So you're just going straight down the side. So we're just going straight down the side. Now we've got this side. beautiful new sewing machine in as well. Jane Brogan brought it in a couple of weeks ago. We have. Um, 
So she's got, there's also, if you are interested in this, they did an amazing tutorial um, with Vicky a couple of weeks ago. So you can just look up the elegance thing. That's on the YouTube channel. So you can search for any of the old shows on there as well. You can go back and watch yourself. Uh, yes. You can. If I'm <laughs> so inclined. <laughs> Completely bored. <laughs> Brilliant. So now you're using that as what I would call a donkey. Um, yeah, it's what I call a leader or an ender, but I'm not going to use that for this reason. I'm going to demonstrate the quarter inch seam. Perfect. Okay. May so I lead in really closely? You, you may, yes. Um, I have got a quarter inch foot on the sewing yes. machine, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the it's distance... It's a quarter inch. No, exactly. I'm just going to cough, hold it. That's all right. <coughs> it's not a bad cough. <laughs> It is dry in here. Are you going to mind if I have a little sip of my coffee while you do this? You carry on. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm the one that's joking. I assumed you had coffee. <laughs> so I'm a dreadful host. I apologise. Do you want some water? I'm fine. Are you sure? You. Yes. I have an unopened bottle there if, if you I want. If I turn blue, you'll get, get right. the hint. I'll yeah. throw some water at you then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so caring. <laughs> How do I get away with all of this? Oh, no. Oh. We were friends, I we thought. We are. <laughs> Brilliant. So I've just dropped the foot down and we will just sew this seam with the needle where it is. Yes. Every machine is different and every needle can it's be different, slightly different. Yes. So we'll just sew. And every quarter inch foot I find is different they as well. They are. But have you got this tip? Wait, wait, wait. Yes, I have. That. Yes. It'll then lift lovely. your foot for you. So I did this yesterday and it's a bit... Um, oh, that is quite wide. It's a bit random, but I'm going to just colour over it with a pencil. Oh, you are good. So that you can see. So it's, I'm not trying to draw the line. I'm just can trying I to just show you roughly so that people can see a little bit more easily. So our first go, you can see that is quite wide for a quarter of an inch. But that's now where you come into your manipulation of where your needle is. That's right. So if you have um, a width setting on your machine, you can adjust that yes. right or left. This machine happens to have a code you can type in and it moves the needle straight away. What did you type in? 06. I didn't know that. Oh, quick, write it down. I'm going to. <laughs> See, top tips every time. And I've got a little barrage of papers like this. And it moves it to the quarter Gosh, inch. that is clever. Quarter inch. But even can so, we rotate that so we can just show on the, on the thing? I'm hoping we can rotate this without damaging anything. This could be fun. Oh no, Kat's very good at this. There so you go. can see we've just typed in 06 and you can see that's there, but it's gone P quarter inch. So you'll be able to get your quarter inch all set up. Oh, that is a top tip, that one. And not all machines will have that, but most no, no, will no. have the width setting. But the um, good ones do. These rather nice ones do. But even so, still, still measure. Yes, always. So if we measure the one that I've just done, that comes to about one, two, three. It's nearly, almost half, nearly an inch. half an inch. Yeah. yeah, which is way too much. Thank you. So we'll sew it again now with the needle moved across. This is like the Creative Grids ruler that I was demonstrating the other day. I love Creative Grids. We've got a larger one on to talk about as well. So if I colour that one in, mm -hmm. can you see how much difference there is there? So you can see now by doing that, we've moved that along and you can see how much it's done. And if we hold that there, look at that. Spot on a quarter of an inch that. Now I've just had a uh, message in. We are aware of the issues that are on the website. We are working on them at the moment. I'm so sorry that it's been happening. If you um, go through onto that search bar that I showed at the beginning of the show on this, um, Sorry, I'm just getting this as, we, as I'm typing this on. So we are having problems with the website as well. So we have the amazing UK-based call centre. So the number is on screen at the moment, 0800 001 4433. So please call up to the call centre. You'll be able to process the order very easily. And there are wonderful people there who are able to help you, talk you through any questions that you have, and be able to process you there. And they're just down the road here. We, I drove past them on the way in this morning. So please don't worry about that. I'm sorry the website's down. As we say, especially on a Sunday, Day and on the weekend they think there'll be less traffic it's a gremlin they're busy rebuilding our own website and we are piggybacking onto the amazing jewelry maker page so please bear with us we're only three and a half weeks old we will get there i promise that bear with us thank you sorry i've got away from your demo that's okay so now we're just going to sew the first the first um raw edge together 
We know we've got a quarter So you start inch on now. that end where you've it got the really little bit extra. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter, matter does it? because at this stage now you could cut that yes. off. Yes. So I will do that just oh. to. But I won't cut it right to Perfect. the Perfect. I always leave a little bit. So. And then. Look at that. They are so cute. And then it's a good idea when you are starting a seam to sew forwards. Remove your pin as you go so you don't stitch over that. And then just do a little bit of a backward stitch. Well, as you well do back stitching on the borders as well. I do too. Well, once, once we're, we're going to add another side on there, so I wouldn't do it on every patch no. I put together. No, 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 no. But I think on a long, thin border like this, by the time you've wrestled with a little bit... The first two or three seams are pop, yeah, they pop up, are popped they pop off, apart, I found yes, that as well. Yeah. But and I do love the fact that you've got this, uh, just a shorter version of the ruler I was demoing this week. I think They're I have really good, pretty much they? every creative grease they ruler so that I've invented. <laughs> but what I love is their little stitchy things on there. And when our website pops back up and running, you'll be able to go back and view these. Yeah, they are my, my favourites. And uh, and then are we so going to do a little opinions? race to see how far get, how far down you get with our demo? Yes. <laughs> so I'm saying my quarter inch seam. We're not pulling or pushing, we're just letting just it letting gently it go. go through. We've got 25 minutes till the end of the show. I've got lots to show. You've got plenty show. of time. Plenty of time to show these things. And if you have any questions, obviously do. Please, yes, they will come through. I will do my best to answer. Well, you've answered questions I didn't know I had. <laughs> well, I'm always learning too, so... Well, I think it's important for people to say that because everybody just assumes you've been sewing for X number of time and you never learn again, and I don't think that's right no. at all. Because there are always new things to learn, other people will come up with better, quicker mm. ideas, um, I'm always trying to find ways to do things more quickly Completely and easily just agree. because I'm so lazy. But well, you see, I say that, but I actually don't think lazy is the right word because it has a bit of a negative more conversation. Efficient. efficient. I'm <laughs> going to go with efficient. Can I show you a top okay. tip I learned whilst I was in America this year? Mm -hmm. It's folding fabric. I don't want to interrupt your demo. Carry no, on, on there. Yeah. So what you do is you fold your fabric, and assuming this is wet the fabric, you put your six and a half inch ruler in, you take that over, and if you fold your fabric that way, assuming it's with the fabric or however long, your fabrics are always the same length. That's and neat. And you take your ruler out and you fold Ooh, it in half. very smart. And there you go. I say. Sorry, I've just, because the rulers are a perfect yeah, length. Yeah, yeah, they're six and, and, and just, a half Because if you do all your fabric that way, you can stack them up beautifully on the shelves. <laughs> Unlike the big pile I just have in the corner of my <laughs> you work. You should have seen me at my, de my demo of my Bargello a couple of weeks ago. It looked like a bomb had gone off. And there's my ruler. Yeah, talking about rulers, when you're cutting a panel like this or the strips for it, a 24 and a half inch ruler, which that one in, is, is, is brilliant. They really are, but these creative grid rulers are amazing. They're, they are, they're excellent. And because they've got the grips on the bottom, it doesn't shift around. No. And you've got light and dark numbers on there, inch yep. and half inches, every eighth of an inch marked as well. Absolutely and this is excellent. again, this is 24, 24 and a half, 24 and a half by six and a half. And I love that extra half inch. Yep. And with the, we were talking briefly there about these rubber, these, what would you call them? Because they're not rubbery, but they're just sort of texturized. They're, they're like a, 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 they're like non-stick grips, but they're like texturized, but they, they don't feel squishy or rubbery. It's like frosted glass almost. It is. It's like they've, they burnt them with a, with one of those um, laser yeah. cutter type things. I suppose like a little, little sandpaper feel, but yes, not rough. But it's not rough and it's not squidgy, but. I love it, and I've actually bought this ruler since then because I had never used one before, and it's now outdone all my rulers, so I've well, got one of these. Well, don't forget as well that all the little measurements I've just mentioned. You've got your 45 and yes, 30 40, or 60, 60 degree angles yeah. on here, which I've demonstrated those before, and I'm sure we will hopefully be doing that again. So please ring into the call centre if you're interested in the ruler. The telephone number is 0800 001 4433. Really sorry the website's having a moment, but uh, it's a free call, UK based, and you can have a lovely chat with these amazing people. And if you want to cut a long width of fabric strip, which is like 42 yes. inches, then you fold your fabric in half and that rule look goes straight goes through the middle of them. Yeah. Brilliant. So I have now got a little bit of pressing to do. Oh, these mats are so good, aren't they? Do you mind the iron? Because Not at it all. Is hot. Look, it's got little sloths on the back oh, of it. I love sloths. They're so good, aren't one, they? One. In fact, I probably think I am one. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> so the first thing to do now, again, is say this is sort of learning steps. When I've sewn a seam, I always press it as yes, sewn. As and that's do I. called setting the seam. Indeed. And that just 
Well, it shocks your cotton into going... <laughs> And it pulls the seam in. I, yeah, it, it beds You're gonna the thread You're going to do that every time you sit a seam, it, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> it beds the thread in here so that... I've got 20 minutes left. OK. When we open it out and press it, we get a much crisper you edge. Oh, you open her as well? Well, I've started doing open seams. So, so I just wanted to talk about that. You can press your seams to one side. Mm -hmm. And in this case, somehow the fabric <laughs> seems to want it's to go that way. That, yes. So I would do that, unless perhaps that's a white fabric and this is a dark one. Then and I'd then you would press to, to the, the dark side, side which yes. is, is a phrase you'll but, often hear. But what's really nice is when you are pressing to one side, you always say, dark side. <laughs> do you? I do. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> It's ironing for crying out loud. We've got to make it more interesting. <laughs> is that a, a star thingy film thing, The Dark Side? Oh. Yes, oh, is it? Star, yes, oh, right. yes, Star Wars or Star Trek. I can never remember which one. Oh, no, I've just like heard Star it Trek. is definitely Star Wars. Thanks, yes. Paul. I'm more of a Trekkie. <laughs> so now we're going to press the seam. And I thought you meant, was that sort of a quilting royalty type thing? You know, all those amazing YouTube videos from all those YouTubers, the quilting royalty of them. <laughs> It is quite sad when a Star Wars reference goes to quilting straight away for me. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> so I've pressed the seam to one side on this, yep. this occasion, but then always turn it over to and get press the other, side. the other side. Because you may just find, as I've done exactly here... Exactly like that, you've got a tiny I've little I've got a mark, tiny little pleat. ...fold, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And I'm trying to demonstrate not what can go wrong, but... What, what to but do think, because... But I think it's great because we all do these and then we know we've got that ch that cheat tip to fix it and get yeah. it right. Yeah, and if I hadn't pressed that properly, it wouldn't have been a big problem. You'd have ended up with a bit of a pleat, but then the width would have changed. Exactly. And if it's different on that side, that'll be wider, that'll be exactly. narrower. And when you're trying to quilt it as well, you'll have too many layers to go yes. through there as yeah, well. absolutely. Well, that's So brilliant. now we have got the, the first strip sewn on, so I'll put the iron away. We'll leave the board out for the moment mm -hmm. if that's okay. Of course. And then, shall we use your nice scissors to trim the ends? I'll let, would you like to demonstrate no, you using do them, because I'm terrified I'm going to make a mistake. And it's too beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so you, ca you can either use your rotary cutter. Shall we, shall we switch? It's all right, I won't use it. Okay, cool. So you can either use your rotary cutter to cut that off, or with such small pieces like this, you can use your She's nice scissors. She's a pro, scissors. you see. <laughs> Brand new scissors. But aren't they, don't they feel so they lovely? Very Christmas. Because I've really had the, the gold handle sound. pair for about four years and I absolutely love using them. And the same on this side. Oh, look at that. I love these. They're very but nice. I'm going to do a very cheeky thing because I was a bit naughty because nice I got very excited about these and I did a little price comparison. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going to give it a go. So we have a very famous um, company in this country and all around the world that does really good price things. So we're gonna do a price comparison here. So you can see today we have these at 19.99. And you can see now, if I, if we can go and we can tell which website this is, so you can all double check it. So that's fine. So it's, this is off, um, this is off Amazon, as you can see, but we're, we're five pounds cheaper than Amazon, so, you decide. We bring you good quality product at a cheaper price. And show you how to use them. Exactly. Well, you're showing them. <laughs> but they are really good to use and they've yes, got a, a very good nice decent feel. Yeah, very nice. I love very them. Nice. And I love the little pair of um, Oh, the embroidery scissors. scissors as well. Yeah. I've lost them here. There we go. Yeah, I've well, you, well, you need got, to trim your threads, darling. I've always got, yeah, I've always got a little pair of those. They're I've got lovely. a pair in the car, I've got a pair in my handbag. That's um, very good. Yeah, I love them. And they're just so nice. They're just very, very pretty. Yes. Oh, so there we go. Perfect. So we've, done, we've sewn on the first strip. First scene, yeah. And we now want to put what's called a cornerstone. Indeed. So if we can go back to the one I've finished. Here's one we did earlier. This is one I did earlier. So this is what is called a cornerstone. And it is just in this case a square. It doesn't always have to be a square, but it is just a square of fabric that we're using to add just a bit more interest to the side oh. of the um, the side of the the quilt, um, and you can also do those if these were used as sashing between blocks, and that's just a term that means something to divide the blocks once they're made. If you wanted to make a bigger that quilt, that kind of yes, yeah, and that would be called the sashing, and these still would the be cornerstone. called cornerstones. I love a good cornerstone. 
Yes, and you can take advantage of using smaller bits and scraps of fabric that you've got might have left over to, to make those with, which is more or less what I've done here. So I'm going to do the cornerstone in the contrast. But the great thing with the cornerstones, you can fussy cut them out as well. You can. I haven't done that with these, but yes, you could. And, and um, I didn't do it with the birds either, but yes, that would be perfect for I wasn't criticising, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I love them. But there's so many interesting details on these, because if you look at that, you could put just the little rose as your cornerstone oh, yeah, and go absolutely. and find them. Or, or that beautiful little swirl, you could just pop that in there as well. So you can see that's how big it is. So you can pop the little swirls. So you could find four swirls and put those in your corners as well. It's just the fabric is so interesting. It's got so many different details on it. It has, and that's another thing, actually. If you were going to use this as a wall hanging rather than a quilt that mm. you put round yourself, if it's going to go on the wall or on the back of your sofa as decoration. Um, these lots of little tiny flowers and little interesting decorations on these fabrics I would sew little seed beads onto them oh even with the birds you could pop little For eyes their on eyes, yeah yeah um so you can really make a lovely almost three-dimensional effect I with the quilt I, as I well. wish you'd said this before because there's a huge box of beads out there I which know, I could I saw have brought them. Up, we could have put on them they <laughs> really love them I think they sell them on the sister channel they do yeah these so, are beautiful yeah so it, there's a lot you can do with Definitely. these and if you want to again you can you can quilt or decorate by hand or one. machine each of the stems of the flowers. And there's lots you can play with. So you can get a lot of practice if you're a beginner. Of course. Without lashing at and huge at that sums price, of money. And it's, it's a real and good steal. And create a beautiful piece of, of work. So to get the cornerstone on, we don't just sew that on the end. Because well, no, otherwise you you've got yeah, a bit hanging over there. Yes. And I did demonstrate why seams yesterday, but we don't want to go into that today. I won't deny, I did watch that and oh, I was you? quite impressed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> why seams are a new thing in my life. Oh, wow. Well. So we have 14 minutes left. Okay, so we're, going to, we're going to sew another border on here with Perfect. the cornerstone. And we're keeping these directional. I'm keeping the birds all facing into the middle just for, for argument's sake. I would as well. So. But just look at the beautiful mix and match here. They don't even yep. look like they're different fabrics. Nope. You can tell nope. they go so beautifully. Yeah, Because they're from the same range they exactly. would have been dyed to the same sort of colours. And again we're just using our quarter inch on that one. Yep, would you pin are. that? So I would pin that. I, would. I probably wouldn't pin it but I, I would recommend either. that you pin If pin you would that. like to pin please by welcome to do so. We don't. <laughs> That's that's only because we're trying to be quick and and, and With so live on. Telly. But, yeah, but I definitely <laughs> would recommend of course. Um, pinning, particularly again if you're a beginner. I hope this isn't disarming with me being quite so close. Not at all. So we're Perfect. Something again. So and now with this, you'd finger press, or would you use your? I eye? would. I would press again with the iron. Yeah. So you're going to set your seam. I'm a big fan of pressing. And on, on these, I would tend to press towards the larger, the larger piece. piece. Again, it is Again, a lighter colour, but to dark if you're really concerned about Perfect. that. Perfect. So I'll give you that, and then somewhere over here I have hidden the pins. And I tried so hard to be tidy today. How have I lost the pins? I haven't pinched them, have I? Oh, I have. I have <gasps> pinched them. I'm so sorry. They would just fit my handbag. <laughs> Well, if they're that high, she wouldn't want to. But they are beautiful. They're, they're actually really nice to, to feel, these they're really pins really lovely. Are. I mean, mostly pins you don't take much notice of, but they're very nice. So we've sewn on uh, one side. And, and this board you can pin into as well. Oh, my goodness. That's so good. <laughs> Who knew? So that's also good for laying things out. And it's not going to dull your pins, no, either. No, no. No. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. So if you're if you're putting patches together, or if you're doing a plique, it's quite handy to lay it out. That's just very them on. good, especially if you're using bonder web as well. Yeah. You could uh, use yeah. Yeah. But if you are using bonder web, don't forget to put your grease proof or baking parchment. And on I've got a top tip with that one as well. Glue side, not glue side, written on the grease proof oh, really? paper because the number of times <laughs> I get it the wrong way around and then my iron's gummed up anyway. I think I've just learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me how I know. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Brilliant. So that one you would, how would you line that up? So now? I've now put that cornerstone on. Perfect. So to line this up, we want to make sure the points join up neatly. Gosh, you are good. It got that lined up perfectly. So the way to do that, in fact, probably the, I would have been better off pressing that to the other side. I'll show you why. In fact, I will do You're that. You're going to nest them. I'm going to nest them. Should I move that that way? That's lovely. Yes, mind the fingers. So I'm going to press that to the other side so I can show you what's called nesting seams. There we go. 
And this is when you are joining seams like this and you want to make sure they're absolutely accurate. The seams line up together absolutely accurately. Perfect. If they're not absolutely yeah. accurate, please don't stress. Oh, exactly. So what that looks like there is you can see what we've done is we've pressed this one one way and that one the other way. And if you fold that back, you can see that they line up perfectly there. And then if you smush them down, for the want of a better word, you line that line up perfectly there and you can feel in your fingers whether that's lined up perfectly. That's what we're looking for. Kind of locks. Yes, it is. It's a little bit of a holding hands of fabric things. But so to double, double, left. double check on that, I would put a pin into the seam. Yes, definitely. And then bring it out through the stitch line. So if it comes out through the stitch line on the front and on the back... Exactly. As long as it's in the same place, you know front and back, you know you're in the right place. So I'll just check on that. Brilliant. I think you've nailed that. Yeah. I'm going to sew slightly upside down because I should have put it on the other end. But anyway, let's go for it. So we've got about five I would have more minutes that. with you. Oh, and I wanted to show you binding. Well, that's all right. We can do a quick binding on this. Yeah, we, we don't can. have to go the whole seam. Just get that corner no, in. I'll just do this. Just do that little corner. Little go a few corner. inches past. Yeah. Have you got the binding somewhere that I can help prep? I have got the binding here. Perfect. Oh, so, you've got these amazing wonder clips. Yeah, I, I love, love the those. Clips. I do love the clips. I'm assuming it's this long pin. piece. Oh, you it are is. good. So there we go. And there's your corner sewn on. And the point. Point is perfect. It's perfect. Lovely. OK. How brilliant. So I see you've started with your binding on that. I've started with the, um, when, so when you're putting your panel together, having um, put your border on, we're now going to do the quilting, which involves putting a piece of backing fabric face yep. down, a piece of wadding on top, and then your actual quilt panel. And you leave this, you'd leave this all the way around, yes. a good two, possibly three inches on a bigger quilt. So that when you're actually quilting it, which is the stitching, it can pull in a little bit. If you've already cut this to size, it's then it'll shrink yeah. back. So do be careful with that. And then what I have done is I, I sprayed 505 spray, as we were talking about earlier, on, on the, the wadding and put that on and put the back. And did that on. on the same on the back as well? Yeah. You can also use quilters pins, mm -hmm. safety pins to secure. You can tack them in place. The only thing with that is if you're tacking, I prefer that for hand quilting. I agree. Yes. If you're tacking and then machine quilting, you can often find the tacking stitches yeah. catching your foot and it's just a bit of a mess. So I have quilted, sewn. For the want of a bit of expression, stitch in the ditch. Stitch in the ditch On around the, the panels. But when it comes to the real ditch, which is the term one. we use stitch in the ditch is for when you've actually stitching where pieces. you've got two joined together which is what we've got here. So I've done it a little bit more obvious so you can see it. But when you try and stitch in the actual seam line, you'll find that you're stitching onto stitches yes. and that tends to sort of weaken it slightly. So I would always stitch on the downside. So you've got a slightly raised side and slightly downside. Yes. So I've exaggerated it so there. So in the valley for the one in the valley. word. Good term, yeah. So I've slightly exaggerated it there. If it can be seen. Of course. Sure. Might bring you a little bit this way. Yep. And you can see, oh, so you can see there, there's when we're exaggerating it out. So I've made it more obvious, made the stitching yes. more obvious, but I've sewn it on the down valley side, as you're saying. I, I won't deny that's probably better than any quilting I've done. Surely on stitch not. in a ditch. No, I'm terrible on my stitch in a ditch. Ooh, I've got a long arm. My I cheat. Worst. I cheat. Oh but I've only been doing it for six years. So yes. You've been doing it for six and a half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Brilliant. then when we have finished all the stitching, I would then also change to a long stitch to, length. Yes. And just go about an eighth of an inch all the all way, around. way around. It doesn't matter. In places I've missed it, it doesn't matter. It just means you, you stop this bunching up and flapping about. And then you can either cut the spare wadding with our lovely new scissors. With our scissors or a rotary cutter, which you prefer, but we'll go with the lovely scissors. Brilliant. It does make a nice sound, doesn't it? It really does, doesn't it? It's a very good noise. 
So we've only got about a minute left with you, Goodness. unfortunately. Doesn't it fly by? Well, let's see how much binding we can get done then. So, that so the is binding is just while finished. you do that side, I think yep. that's what you were looking for. There's the end there. The binding is a slightly wider piece of fabric, two and a half inches in this case. And then with the binding, what you would do is... on the, yeah, on the diagonal. So you can see we've drawn a pencil line there. You would stitch on that. And then when you fold it back, you won't be able get, to tell that where the binding ends and starts. And it does make it less bulk that you're sewing with. And we'll see how quickly we can get a bit of binding on. So I'd start part way down the quilt rather than never start on a corner. Nope, and always leave a little bit, don't you? And always try to get that seam not coming on the corner if you can. Would you do it that way? To get the birds going the same way. Yes. Oh, so this yeah. isn't directional. But you can get yes, very particular is. and you can actually get your binding facing the same way as your borders if you want to. So I'd start a few inches in from the end. In fact, let's do quite straight. I can do a better and longer binding demo on another day. Of course. Well, I'm hoping you're going to come back with me. I've had great fun today. <laughs> Stitch to a quarter of an inch from the raw edge and you'll find a lot of your sewing machine feet have a little quarter inch they ridge do. or mark on them so you can use that as your guide. I would go backwards and off the edge of the quilt. Then to turn the corner, you've got your binding going the direction you were mm -hmm. going. You change direction. So that it now faces the direction you're going to be going. And that line there matches up with that line there. Fold again. And we would clip or pin to, to make that. So you've got this little, this little point Perfect. here. So it's not going to be too neat because I haven't clipped or pinned. I have an idea. Why don't you carry on doing that? We can don't rush it. Go down and do it as you're comfortable while I recap what we've got. Okay. Would that be all right with yeah, you? Yeah, I'll try and make it. Now let's see if we can. So we're going to start now, we're going to go back and refresh over the bundle. Now I th personally, now remember the bundle is um, a group bundle that you can get for $17.97 where you're going to get, oh gosh, I've just heard where over half the stock has already gone on these, on the bundle. So you can see you've got two, effectively two panels in a different colourway um, and this is just over 60 centimetres with the fabric. And they're just so pretty, being so different. And you could then make these into a different quilt. And in the bundle, you're going to get the two half metres of fabric, again, with coordinating fabrics that just work so beautifully with them. And for $17.97 for the, two, for the three pieces of fabric, it's just such a good price. And then as well as that, you've got these um, individually on the website. Or, but again, remember to call the call centre. It's 0800 001 4433, and they'd be able to help you with that. Because you, may want to, you might want to back your quilt in this. You might want to buy two bundles and make a really nice sized lap quilt. And you could do these individually, you can do them as a bundle. I think the bundle, you make a bit more of a saving on that. But it's just such beautiful fabric. We've got our gorgeous pins, with Millwood pins, or they clover pins, sorry, I can't recall. Clover. Clover pins. Sure. We're going to go back and do the fabrics individually as well, which is good. So this is then going to be the graphic for it doing individually. And again, that's five ninety five all day. One p and p three ninety five. And the telephone number to dial because our website's having a moment is oh eight hundred double zero one double four double through. And then we've got the blue one. This is definitely my favourite on this one because it's just so beautiful. And what I do is I love stack and whacking, which is going to bring to you at another time. But stack up this fabric is so good because it's got a really amazing intricacy of fabrics of fabric design. And then you've got the panel as well. And again, you could do three or four of these. You could do four of these. You could do six of these. You could do nine of them. And then we just work so well. And at that price to get something so easy to work with and do that. So we've got this an amazing, I remember Mother's Day is in a week's time. Oh, and it's Laura's birthday. Oh, what are we doing? I, hadn't, I didn't know, I haven't seen Laura in a week. So this is an amazing set with really beautiful dress shears. Beautiful dress shears. And you can see I've got my thimble on at the same time to multitask. I've got a lovely packet of pins, which I'm trying to get in as well. 
If I had a third hand, I'd be able to pop in these gorgeous these. I don't think I opened the scissors before. Oh, look at Sally, she's a star. So you've got these gorgeous, gorgeous set there. So, Sally, yes, what have we got? How have you got on? So, if we go back to... I sewed down the one side, turned that little pleat, sewed down the other side. So and when we turn that, that back, round. you get a lovely gorgeous mitered How wonderful. Corner. Sally, it has been an absolute joy having you. I'm so glad you've come through. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm sorry this we've run late and run off. Please join us again soon and I'm back tomorrow for a two hour special. Have a great day. Thank you for your time.